Hey there, my name's Morgan and I'm a librarian at the Old Worthington Library. You might have seen me there before in the children's department, hanging out with all the books and kids like you. These days though, I'm spending a lot more time in my own house with my own book collection and my dog who's sleeping back there and well, myself and my dog and my books. Did I mention my books? So in case you're like me and you've been doing a lot of extra reading lately, I thought I would hop on here and share some of the books I've really been enjoying lately in case you could use some new fresh ideas. The great news is that all of these books are available to check out at the library with your library card, and some of them are even available to stream or download as eBooks or e-audiobooks using apps like Hoopla and Libby. Don't worry, I'll be sure to tell you which ones. All right, I have a lot of books to share and I know we don't have a lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump in. Okay. First things first, let's start with this gem right here. This is Midsummer's Mayhem by Rajani LaRocca, and it's actually a modern retelling of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. So I know when you hear the word Shakespeare, you might think boring, but believe me, this book is anything but boring. It is delightful. It's all about 11-year-old Mimi Maxson, who comes from a very large, very impressive family. Her dad is a famous food writer, her mom is a successful businesswoman, and her three older siblings all have achievements and accomplishments of their own. Sometimes it's hard for Mimi to not feel invisible, but all of that is about to change because Mimi here just found out about a contest at the brand new bakery in town. If Mimi can win this contest with some spectacular baked goods, not only will she prove that she's worthy of being a member of her super talented family, but she'll also be one step closer to becoming a celebrity chef like her idol, Puffy Faye. What a name. The only problem is Mimi has zero inspiration, like zero, zilch, none. Ever since her best friend moved away and her dad mysteriously lost his taste buds, she just doesn't have any motivation. Her motivation has taken a serious hit. So in a desperate attempt to find some ingredients or ideas or inspiration, she sets off outside on a hunt. And that's when a mysterious but strangely familiar song lures her into the woods behind her family's house. And in those woods, she meets Vic. Vic is a new kid. She's never seen him before. And Vic just so happens to know about parts of the woods that she's never been to. And these parts of the woods have crazy plants and animals that she didn't even know grew in Massachusetts, like wild boar and banyan trees. But then Vic and Mimi get an idea. What if they took some of these exotic ingredients and added them to her baked goods and took them to the next level? And that's exactly what Mimi does. But as her treats become more delectable and more enchanted, things start to get a little more weird. All of a sudden, her dad is eating everything in sight 24-7 around the clock, and then her siblings are getting caught up in drama all over town. Mimi can't help but wonder if all of this strange behavior has something to do with the enchanted ingredients from the forest. But is that even possible? Magic's not real. And if it is possible, what does that mean? What is really lurking in those mysterious woods? And how is she going to fix everything without sacrificing her chance at winning the contest and becoming a famous celebrity chef? Friends, you know what I always say, you're going to have to read it to find out, but I think you're really going to like this one. If you are like me and you've been doing a lot of baking in addition to a lot of reading lately, this one is absolutely delicious. I give it five out of five candied rose petals, which is a legitimate recipe that comes at the back of the book. And if that's not enough of a reason to check it out, I don't know what is. The good news is you can find this one available to stream as an audiobook right now on Hoopla. Okay, next up, we've got one of my all-time favorite summer adventure stories. This is The Season of Sticks Malone by Kekla Magoon. And friends, it just does not get any better than this. This book starts off in, you guessed it, the summertime, when brothers Caleb and Bobby Jean trade their baby sister for a bag of fireworks. Let's back up a little bit. So Caleb and Bobby Jean were really looking forward to spending their entire summer hanging out and adventuring in the woods behind their house. Caleb has always dreamed of venturing beyond their small Indiana town and having adventures that prove he's more than just ordinary, or as his dad calls it, extraordinary. But so far, the summer is not living up to Caleb's expectations. It's been pretty boring. That is, until they make that trade with the local bully who just so happens to have always wanted a baby sister and has a bag of fireworks. So he's thinking, things are looking pretty good. I got a bag of fireworks, got rid of my baby sister. This is great. 
But then the parents find out about the deal and everything's off and the baby sister gets returned and Caleb and Bobby Jean and the bully named Corey are all sentenced to a summer of labor together, which is not very awesome at all. But the other problem is they still have this bag of fireworks and they don't know what to do with it. So Caleb and Bobby Jean decide to go hide those fireworks in the woods behind their house. And that is when everything changes because that is when they meet Styx Malone. Styx is 16, mysterious, and very cool. He's the new kid in town and he's been to a lot of different places and he knows a lot of different stuff. He tells Bobby and Caleb that he can help them trade that bag, bag of fireworks for something even cooler, something even better, something they could never even imagine if they use a technique called the Great Escalator Trade. So imagine that you have something like a pencil eraser and you trade that pencil eraser for a pen and then you trade that pen for a notebook and then you trade that notebook for a pair of headphones and then you trade that pair of headphones for something even cooler and bigger and better until you're left with something way more awesome than the pencil eraser that you started off, off with. So that is what Styx promises Bobby and Caleb. And pretty soon the brother's entire summer is spent in pursuit of a bigger and better trade. Because for Caleb, this might mean the secret to a bigger and better life. But pretty soon as the trades get bigger and bigger, Caleb and Bobby Jean realize they might be in over their heads. Styx has a lot of secrets and he isn't telling the truth about his life before he came to town or the trades that they're making. Caleb is starting to worry. Is everything gonna fall apart before their plan is complete? Is his life going to be stuck in the ordinary zone forever? I loved everything about this book. I think I finished it in one sitting if I remember. It's not every day that you find a book that asks the big questions about what it means to be in a family and how to be a good friend while also having edge of your seat action and thrills and suspense. Oh, it's just so good. I give it five out of five bags of fireworks and you can find the ebook or audiobook to check out on Libby. Maybe you're like me and summer is just not your favorite season. Maybe you are ready for fall and chilly nights and spooky stories. And if that's the case, I just have a really quick question for you. Um, are you afraid of scarecrows? No? Because if you're not, I got some bad news. You're about to be. So this is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. And I am not exaggerating when I say that this book made me sleep with the lights on. Um, let me introduce you to the main character. Her name is Ollie and Ollie is a reader. Ollie has suffered a very big, very tragic loss in her life. And as a way to cope, she just escapes into books. Reading helps her leave reality behind and it helps her deal with all of the feelings inside of her. So that might be why when she's walking home one day and she sees a strange old woman yelling and crying about to toss a mysterious old book into the river, she feels like she has no choice but to rescue the book. So that's exactly what she does. She steals the book and starts to run away, but not before the strange old woman gives her a haunting piece of advice. Avoid large spaces, stick to small. So Ollie goes home with this advice ringing in her ears and she decides to open up this strange book and read it and see what it's all about. Inside the book, she finds a dangerously scary story about a girl named Beth her beloved brothers, and the peculiar deal that they strike with something or someone known as the Smiling Man. And the Smiling Man is not here to grant wishes. He's here to tear your life apart. So this story freaks Ollie out pretty bad, but it's just a story, right? It's not real. There's no reason to get freaked out. She just tries to forget about it. And it's pretty easy to forget about it because her class is going on a field trip the next day to this old farm called Smoke Hollow. The only problem is Smoke Hollow has a creepy haunted history all of its own. And suddenly the scary book and Ollie's reality collide because she's off exploring at this farm on the field trip when she stumbles upon graves, graves that have the names of the very people in the book that she had just read the night before. Could the story have been true? Is the smiling man real? Unfortunately for Ollie, she's about to find out a lot sooner than she thinks because on the way home from the field trip, the bus breaks down and all of a sudden her teacher leaves the entire class alone to go back to the farm and get help. So it's just Ollie and her classmates on this bus in the middle of this creepy farm and the only adult around is the bus driver. And this bus driver, he doesn't look right. 
He's been weird the whole time. He looks strange. And all of a sudden he turns around and shares some advice of his own with the kids left behind on the bus. Best get moving, he says. At nightfall, they'll come for the rest of you. So Ollie and two of her classmates have heard about all they need to hear and they book it off the bus and start to run for the tree line. As they're running, the watch on Ollie's wrist that was previously broken for ages starts to blink one word, run. And just as they start to run, they hear the bus driver call out one last piece of advice. Avoid large spaces, stick to small. And that's it, that's all I can tell you. I can't tell you anything else about this book because I don't wanna spoil it for you. It is for any Goosebumps fan, for any fan of scary stuff, you probably are gonna to wanna to read it with the lights on, like I said. I just can't recommend it enough. And if you like this one, there's a sequel that came out just last year called Dead Voices. I highly recommend checking out both of them. If you dare, you can download them both as eBooks with your library card using the Libby app. Let's talk about Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk. This book is probably in my top three favorite reads of 2020. It's brand new and I think it stands a real chance at winning the Newbery Medal, but nobody ever asked me, so we'll see. Um, this book is everything that I love about mysterious stories taking place during distant times. This one in particular takes place in Maine during the Great Depression, and it's all about Ellie. Ellie and her journey towards finding herself and finding her way to the top of Echo Mountain. Why Echo Mountain? Well, Ellie and her family pretty much have lost everything after the big financial crash of 1929. They've lost their money, they've lost their belongings, and they've even lost their home. And so that's why they find themselves on the rugged terrain of Echo Mountain, trying to carve out a brand new life for themselves after having everything taken from them. Ellie's sister Esther resents the mountain. She doesn't like living there and she doesn't like how much their lives have changed. Ellie, on the other hand, feels like she's finally found her true home. The nature and the wilderness and the mystery and the freedom, all of it helps her deal with the fact that her father is in a coma after a terrible accident, an accident that she's being blamed for. So Ellie spends most of her time in the natural world while her mother and sister take care of her father. What they don't know is that Ellie is desperate to find a cure for her father, no matter what it takes, no matter how long she has to search. And pretty soon, as she explores the mountain around them, she starts noticing these tiny, mysterious wooden carvings popping up everywhere. And with the help of a scruffy mutt, Ellie begins to follow the clues to the top of the mountain in search of a woman only known as the Hag, because the Hag supposedly has healing secrets and a cure that might save her father. But just because Ellie knows a few of the mountain secrets doesn't mean that she knows them all. And she certainly doesn't know the untold stories of the people that came before her on the mountain. And as she ventures further and further towards the top, she begins to discover more than she ever bargained for about herself, about her family, and about what it means to find strength and courage in a time of crisis. Um, also, did I mention there's puppies? Because there's puppies. This book is for anybody who dreams of freedom, anybody who dreams of adventure, anyone who welcomes the mysteries of life and isn't afraid to roll up their sleeves and get stuff done. I give this book five out of five puppies and you can borrow the ebook through the Libby app with your library card. Okay, friends, last but certainly not least, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite, favorite mysteries of all time. This is I Can Make This Promise by Christine Day. And it is so good, so good, that I was pretty tempted to go tear apart my family's attic looking for long buried family secrets, because that is exactly how our story begins. So imagine for me, if you will, that you and your best friends are poking around in your family's attic and you find a box, a box you've never seen before. And inside this box are old photographs of a woman who could be your twin. She looks exactly like you, from her hair and her eyes right down to the gap in her teeth. What's even stranger is that all of the letters in the box are signed with your first name. So whoever this woman is that looks exactly like you, she's also named after you too. Or maybe you're named after her. Who is she? Where did she come from? You've never seen her. You've never met her. You've never heard your parents talk about her. How could this be? So when Edie and her two best friends go digging around in her family's attic, this is exactly what happens. She finds a box full of old letters and photographs from, from someone named Edith. 
but why does little Edie not know anything about big Edie? Why have her parents never mentioned her? Why hasn't anybody ever mentioned her? All of her life, Edie has known that her Native American mother was adopted by a white family. So no matter how curious she might have been about her family's heritage, her mom and dad pretty much never had any answers for her. But after discovering the mysterious box of photos and letters from Big Edie, Little Edie can't help but wonder if the woman belongs to the mysterious Native American family that Edie has never known about. And if that's true, why have her parents kept her a secret? And how can Edie trust them now to tell her the truth? So, determined to find the truth, Edie begins to unravel the mystery of Edith's past, all while her relationships with her family and her best friends start to feel a lot more complicated than they ever have before. Who can she trust? And what are the painful truths that are hidden in Edith's family history? This book completely captivated me, and the ending stayed with me for a long, long, long time. And I think it'll stick with you too. I give this one five out of five old letters and you can stream the audiobook or the ebook with your library card on the Hoopla app. Okay, friends, I think we're running out of time and I'm running out of arms to hold all these books. So don't forget that you can reserve these from the library with your library card or look for them to download or stream on apps like Hoopla and Libby with your library card. I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I did and I hope that we're all together in the library again soon. Have a great day.